Hey there, Bombers. It is the final installment for my Powered of the Year. I've already done playing, I've already done watching, so now it's time for reading. Now, I haven't read as much as I have played and watched, so I'm gonna talk about the books that I've read and listened to, and the ones that I recommend also. So I wanna talk about the four books that I read this year. That doesn't sound like much, does it? No. And three of them were for book club. But I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks, so we'll start with reading, actual physically reading, and then we'll move to listening, okay? Which is technically still reading because it's still a book. So for Alpha Book Club, which is a new show on Nerdist's Alpha program, which I've been absolutely loving. I'm doing it alongside Rachel Hine, who is the editor-in-chief of Nerdist.com, and also Hector Navarro, who's just an eloquently spoken, lovely, lovely person who kind of reminds me of Riz Ahmed now that I think about it. A Wrinkle in Time was the second out of the three that we read for Book Club. We do one a month. I thought it was a very easy read. It was written, I think, in the 50s, and you can kind of tell with its language. Oh, bother. Oh, my. But what I love is that this is a female author who's written a very genre-blended book. It's science fiction. It tackles a lot of science, but also religion and fantasy. What she's ended up doing is inspired a bunch of different authors after her and really paved the way for a female protagonist in books, which I think is pretty cool. And her book is the one that starts, It Was a Dark and Stormy Night. Go figure. The first book that we tackled though is my next favorite book for you to read, if you want to, is a horror book. Now I've never read horror before, that was a new experience for me. And it's called The Haunting of House Hill, again by a female author. Uh, I am in the same era I think as the first one, if not a little bit earlier in time. Um, I didn't think I could be scared by reading words, but you can be. Ha! Ah, there's that. Very paranormal, very psychological. If that's what you're into, I recommend that book. It's the only horror book that I've read though, so I can't compare it to anything else. The next book that I want to recommend, I've spent a long time reading this one. I'm taking my damn time because I don't want to keep waiting. And it is the final book that's already out for Game of Thrones, A Dance with Dragons. Um, I've got about three chapters to go. I'm telling you, I am slowly reading this one. Uh, it is a little bit different to what we saw in the series, but it was a good little refresher as well. Yeah, I recommend it, it's not bad. But the number one book that I've read is actually by a notoriously horror writer, Stephen King, but it's not a horror book at all. It's called The Dark Tower. The first book being The Gunslinger. Wow, the way that Stephen writes is incredible. This was my first Stephen King book. His language, he has a way with his words. It took me so long to read this book because I would read every sentence three times. The first time I'd be like, what the hell was that? And I'd read it again and be like, wow, that was beautiful. And then the third time to make sense of it all. Well done. If you haven't read it, go for it. I had the very, very end spoiled for me, but I think that actually helps me want to read all of this a lot. If you've read it, what's your favorite book? Why did you love it? When did you read it? I want to know all those things. So that's it for the physical reading side of my list, but I want to talk about audiobooks as well. I've got a list of books that I've been listening to all year. I almost prefer it because it's good with my time. I don't know if you've seen the playing or watching videos already, but you'll know that I like to play games while watching. And I find that reading, it's just, I mean, I'll do it when I'm at the gym because it means I'm doing something else as well. But audiobooks are so great because I'm driving while listening to it. So I'm getting a lot done as well. So uh, some audiobooks that I recommend. I'm currently listening to Lost Stars by Claudia Gray, which is a canon Star Wars book. But this one's really cool. It's kind of set around the time of the first Death Star, but it's about two Imperial officers that were in the um, academy training to be pilots. And it's sort of like a love story, a Shakespearean love story, meaning two different views, but a love connection. I'm only about halfway through it. I'm loving it. It's so well done. I'm a big fan. Sticking on with Star Wars, I listened to Laws of the Sith by Paul Camp. Um, the best thing about listening to Star Wars books is that they have access to all the Lucasfilm archives, which means they can use all the sound bites and sound effects and score. And it makes it so great when listening to it all. I'm a big, big, big fan of that. I went through a big Ernest Klein phase as well this year because Amada came out uh, last year and I wanted to listen to it. So I listened to all of Ready Player One and then went straight into Amada. So I became very, very accustomed to hearing Will Wheaton's voice. And I actually spoke to him the other night about it, being like, I, I like your voice, I've listened to all the books. Um, Ready Player One, far superior to Amada. And Ready Player One is actually the next book that we'll be covering in January for Alpha Book Club. So if you haven't read that, do it. I read it back in 2013, it took me a day and a half, and listening to it's just as great. I love that book. I know people can poke holes in the fact that it's just nostalgia porn. 
I don't care, serve it up to me on a platter. I also listened to all of the Harry Potter books. For some reason in America on Audible, you can only listen to Jim Dale's narration of the books. Whereas in Australia, you get the Stephen Fry version. It took me three books to warm up to Jim Dale's narration. He's a bit of an older man. He's got very proper enunciations with his English accent, but he can't say his R's. And that was a little bit weird for me listening to Howie Potter. <laughs> and the way that he um, would do Hermione's voice is very whingy and sing-songy. So, oh, Howie, Howie, Howie. I was like, that's just noise. But by the time I sunk in with it and really committed to listening to it, I fell in love with it. And by the end of the final book, I was devastated that it was all over. Worth a listen to. Fuck, I love Harry Potter. My number one books that I listened to, I'd already previously read them, so I wanted to hear them. They are Patrick Rothfuss's The Name of the Wind and The Wise Man's Fear. These books will always be, until I find a better one, the top of my recommend list. I actually have a fantasy book recommendations video right here on Geek Bomb, so check that one out. Holy hell, this is a must read. Um, initially when listening to the narrator for this one, I didn't love it. I thought he had a weak-ish voice, but again, it's just kind of like re-acclimatizing how someone should sound. You're just not used to it. And then when you get used to it, it's absolutely great. But listening to these books after having read them, was great. Oh my gosh, guys, do yourself a favor and read them or, or listen to them. I don't care. They're just amazing. It's so, so, so good. And I know that Patrick Rothfuss has a charity site called worldbuilders.org. He constantly runs a lot of auctions with fellow authors to auction off some really, really cool money can't buy things. Um, so always check that out because his organization is raising money for a really, really good cause. And he's a friend of mine, so I want to help him out in any way I can. And then you can help me out by helping him out and we all do good things together. Sound good? Well, that's my list of reading for 2016. They're the books that I read and what I listened to and what I definitely recommend to you. But is there something on there that I didn't mention? Maybe you read a book that you want to recommend to me. Let those thoughts be known in the comments below because that's what Geek Bomb's all about. It's about unleashing your inner geek. And we are all geeks, which is why we're here. And I think sharing is caring and hell, if you recommend something that I end up reading, then more power to you because you've helped affect and change my life, which I appreciate. Thank you so much for joining me for all of 2016, guys. It's been such a magical year. Uh, big changes have happened in my life. Big changes have been happening on the channel. Um, any advice that you have for me, I'd love to hear it. Any way that we can get better, any shows that you're loving, any ideas that you have. That's what the comments are all about. I read each and every one of them. If you're a dick, I will block you. That's how this goes. Uh, <laughs> thanks again. Honestly, you've I'm not doing this for me, I do this for you. I do this because I, I care about Geek Bomb and I care about what it stands for and I care about being a geek and supporting geekdom. So yeah, big love to all of you guys. Anyway, I'll shut up now, bye bye.